What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, so this year we've been locked up and uh, spent plenty of time in the studio and I've been uh, you know, changing around my plugins quite a bit this year and I wanted to take a look at sort of five sort of secret weapon compressors that I've uh, been using a lot lately in my workflow. Um, I've got a ton of model stuff which I love very dearly but um, you're not going to find any of those in there so no sort of uh, Shadow Hill stuff or, or the SPL Iron or any of those. Uh, these are all quite out there things. Um, some of them more creative tools than just uh, mixed tools. Um, but let's dive in. We're going to check out the list. There's some interesting stuff in here. Let's check it out. Okay, I've just got like a little drum loop loaded up in the background just for demonstration purposes. And the first uh, compressor on the list and this is one that I'm turning to more and more for just sort of everything at the moment it's just a really simple easy computer uh, compressor to use digital compressor uh, so no analog modeling or anything going on but it has some really really interesting features in it um, so this is zip from unfiltered audio um, let's check out just the basics I mean you've got what you expect the ratio threshold we'll take a listen to what it sounds like got auto gain compensation as well which is handy uh, but let's just take a look at one or two of the interesting features so you've got this um, color dial over here one thing I really like when you're compressing stuff quite heavily you tend to lose some of the punch in the low ends and stuff you can rectify that by um, filtering out the side chain to stop it from compressing the lows but this contrast dial I really or this contrast algorithm I really like just kind of adds a bit more weight back into the signal after it's been compressed take a listen It's almost like a bit of saturation or something going on there. There's a couple of other algorithms as well, like bit crush, auto high pass, which will filter out the lows for you. Some filtering a saturation mode as well. And then the other thing that I really like is the um, detection phase in this. Uh, you can actually, typically it's set to amplitude and you can have that set between RMS and peak values. Uh, you can hear the difference, the peak is going to be a lot harder hitting now as opposed to the RMS but if we um, play around with this sitting here uh, so currently it's being triggered by the threshold as the amplitude goes over the threshold but what you can do here for example let's look at uh, tonalness You know, the, the compressor is being triggered mostly by the kick drum there because that's got the most tone in it, whereas the other stuff is not really triggering the compression at all. Uh, we can look at noisiness. You're going to hear a lot more triggering happening because the hi-hats are kicking in all the time. So darkness, for example, uh, there's almost no compression happening here because there's nothing really dark and filtered in that. It's... Um, mostly bright signals uh, so vice versa when we flip over to the bright detection phase a lot of it's going to be triggering the compressor particularly the hi-hats quietness as well the compressor starts to kick in when the drum hits aren't actually playing and then the release phases during the the attack of the kick uh, and the snares, which kind of gives it more like a fade in kind of effect as well, it kind of kills the transients. Uh, yeah, so really interesting little plug in, some, some really nice additions to this, um, and also just being a really easy to use, great little compressor. On top of that, you've also got the modulation from uh, all unfiltered audio stuff that you can plug in and modulate stuff in a compressor as well if you want to. Cool, let's jump into the second one. Another unfiltered audio plugin, and I know this is not a compressor per se, but uh, it's, I mean, Spec Ops is a spectral multi effects unit. Um, how this works is it puts everything from audio into an FFT, so you end up with a spectrum, and then a lot of the effects get uh, done at the spectral stage. Um, but we're going to take a look at the Spectral Compander. Um, now, this is not really a mixed tool per se, the compression is far too aggressive most of the time. Um, but as a creative tool for really cr 
crushing the hell out of something it's incredibly good uh and again this has been done at a spectral level so it's not really affecting the audio in the same way as a traditional compressor would just dial this in and take a listen to uh what this sounds like so we'll dial down the threshold and check out when we dial up the ratio now pretty harsh but uh, really cool as a creative effect and then on top of that you've got all the other uh, goodness that you can do with uh, you know adjusting the FFT size for example you get that kind of pre-ring happening uh, at the high FFT obviously this does kill the latency in your track but um, can be handy for sort of sound design stuff and you get all the other stuff like freeze uh, the speed section can give you some interesting effects as well pitch shifting you can stretch out the uh, um, spectrum as well and then obviously the multiband section which you're not going to cover here but yeah um this little module inside of this effect super super cool for uh, sort of really harsh uh compression the next one we're going to take a look at uh, i love this it's uh, such an underrated plug in this um so this is dynamic spectrum mapper from uh, pro audio dsp it's also a plugin alliance plugin uh, very much like um, Spec Ops, this is working at a spectral level, so it's taking the audio via FFT, then uh, adjusting the levels in the uh, spectral phase before sending it back to the audio again. So what this essentially does is, I can't remember exactly how many bands it splits it into exactly, but it's it's like a hundred band, multi-band compressor, or something to that effect. It's, it's a lot of bands that it splits it into. Um, so the benefit to this is, when we're compressing something like this drum loop now, where you've got a kick playing, typically you'll kill the lows, if we play that back. You can see the low end amplitude is a lot higher than the rest of the loop. So when we start bringing the, the threshold and the ratio up and the threshold down. So it's compressing the highs slightly there, but the kick is just being killed completely because that is of such a much more amplitude that it's bringing it down a lot more. Uh, so normally you would add a filter into the side chain to stop the compressor from compressing the kick. But it, what if you do want to compress the kick, if you want to have the same amount of gain reduction on the kick as you do on the hi-hats, what you can do with this one is capture a profile uh, for the threshold. So you don't have a straight threshold anymore, you'll have one that follows the, the overall curve of your audio. So you'll see what we do, we'll hit capture. You can hold it down so it can move dynamically. Once you're happy, now watch what happens, we bring up the threshold again, we'll also compress the same. We'll do some fairly harsh compression, high ratio. And you're not losing the kick because the threshold for the kick now is much higher than the threshold for the hats. The hats are crossing this at the same time that the kick is crossing the threshold. So this is really, really cool. Uh, it's great for vocals as well. You can use it to DS stuff. It's nice for mastering as well. You can use a limiter in your master chain. Um, you can also adjust the, uh, the threshold manually as well. So if you want even less of the kick, you can kind of adjust that by yourself. Maybe you want to squash the hats a little bit more. We can bring that down more. Yeah, so really, really great underrated plug in this. Uh, very, very cool compressor. 
Uh, next up on the list. So this is one I've had for ages, and um, I still keep coming back to this all the time. It's the Vengeance Mastering Suite, the multiband compressor from uh, Killworth Audio. Um, it's not the best sounding uh, multiband compressor. It can sound a little bit uh, harsh sometimes, but there's a number of cases where I really love using this thing. And there's also a couple of cool little features in this that you don't find in a lot of other multiband compressors. Um, so let's just uh, play the audio through this. Okay, got no compression happening now. Let's um, just flick through some of the presets. So you can see you've got a typical multiband, four-band multiband compressor. This one's currently turned off here in this preset. Uh, you can adjust the levels of the bands. Uh, you've got a limiter stage as well. Um, fairly simple, this. Uh, there's, uh, this is quite nice as well. You've got a mix for each uh, independent uh, band as well. So you can actually mix the compression between the two, uh, the two as well as a master mix as well um what i do use this a lot for is for shaping bass lines especially like cytron stuff um you've got these variable uh crossover filters uh right from a very simple 6 db which is very transparent you barely hear the uh, crossover points at all uh, right up to this 96 dB, which is fairly extreme, and you'll see in this case it's going to kill our kick completely because of the phasing that occurs um, at these crossover points. Uh, because essentially you've got two uh, filter cutoffs that are kind of interacting at, at, at a point and um, at those steep levels they do cause some phasing um, but in some cases when you try to shape sounds um, it can be really handy just to kind of get that little bit of separation in certain frequencies here uh, so yeah Cytron's bass lines um, quite often I like this as a multiband processor just to use it as a shaping tool uh, and then furthermore there's some really cool little features down at the bottom here as well you can use this more creatively as well if you click on this little DPC section down here, it's essentially a um, volume shaper per band as well. Uh, so we can play that back. And watch what happens when I dial up the strength. It's basically adding a little bit of a volume boost uh, on those sections, but we can actually change those up a little bit as well and go through some of the presets. Let's flip that one. Set these post limits as well. So it's quite subtle there, but it just gives you this added a little bit of movement to stuff. Um, I wouldn't use this on a master, but uh, for you know single tr single track compression on bass lines, or even like a, like a sort of synth line or whatever, just to add a little bit of extra movement. And these nodes are all editable as well, so you can kind of dial in. Uh, little volume changes to each of the bands. Yeah, so that's um, multiband compressor from Vengeance Audio. Uh, cool little plugin, I still use this loads. Uh, and the last one I wanted to check out, and I put this one in here just because of how flexible it is. And the more I use this, the more I love this plugin. Um, so this is press work from uh, UHE or UHE, sorry. Um, 
And the, the cool thing about this is it gives you controls that actually govern how the compressor works. So essentially, it's kind of like a create your own compressor toolbox, um, especially when you're looking at these things like the non-linearity non dials down at the bottom here. You can kind of control the um, gain reduction behavior uh, for the compressor. You've also got stuff like feed forward, feedback, um, so if you kind of know the specs for a specific compressor model, like an analog compressor model, you can kind of get quite close to to that with this. Now they have actually included like quite a few presets as well. Um, if you come down to the vintage, you'll see there's some familiar looking numbers here. Uh, this is modeled after, well not modeled exactly, but uh, the uh, preset basically tries to follow the response of a uh, API 2500, for example. Uh, we can check out the, uh, let's say, the 1176. And you can hear the, uh, the response is completely different between these presets as well, and it's just the way that they've set this up. It's not necessarily the attack and release for the compressors. It's the actual behavior of the gain reduction phase and the detector phase. They're completely different. So once you kind of get to grips with this, uh, there's so much you can do with it. And um, it's got some other cool features like the saturation circuit, which is really nice. And then furthermore, there's an easy view as well. So if you don't want to get into all of this stuff, uh, you can just hit this initialized view. So this would be the normal one. Um, you can jump straight over to the easy compressor, which is just super simple to set up. Fast, slow, uh, looks kind of like an opto compressor, this. Uh, the vocal compressor, this kind of follows the LA2A, um, kind of. Same sort of uh, controls that you'd have in that as well. It also has a DSA built into it as well, which is really nice. So these are essentially, it's the same compressor, it's just sort of different skins with a sort of scaled back a set of controls for a specific um, job drum compressor uh, the uh, bus compressor this is similar to the sort of SSL kind of thing um, you can see all these settings here the ratios are kind of locked at 2, 4 and 8 um, and then lastly this is kind of similar to a Fairchild I believe uh, but they've got this set up as uh, MS so you've got mid and side and just nice and easy to uh, to set up. So super, super um, versatile compressor, this. I love this. I've been using this a lot more uh, lately. Cool. So that's uh, that's like my my list of um, compressors that I've, I've been kind of uh, playing around a lot with lately. That uh, along with, you, you know, the usual um, set of the analog kind of stuff that are my favorite still, like the uh, Vertigo VSC2. I use loads. Uh, Shadow Hills for mastering the Purple Audio MC77 is always in my tracks as well uh, from Plugin Alliance. Um, great in drum buses. Uh, and let's see if there's any. The Alpha Master as well. This is still a staple in my mastering chains. Um, I love this compressor a lot. But these are all sort of typical. Uh, sort of vintage model compressors and I wanted to kind of look at the slightly less known um, stuff uh, that I've been quite impressed with lately. Cool. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, don't forget you can hit like and subscribe if you want to help us out and support the channel. Uh, also go check out www.marulamusic.com if you want to pick up sound banks or sample libraries. And uh, don't forget to hit the notifications so you stay in touch uh, when we have new content out. All right, guys, I'll catch you soon. Stay safe. Cheers.